Hello and welcome to the video Why Predictive Model by Boston Decision. You are the manager or the CFO of an organization whom has just been requested by its board of directors to construct a revenue projection for the upcoming four weeks. You have historic information related to revenue on a weekly basis. Using the historic information you construct a scatter plot. Then add a best fit trend line through that scatter plot and extrapolate forward to see what the revenue will be for the upcoming four weeks. Using that extrapolation from the trend line, you fill in the blanks and see that over the upcoming four weeks, your revenue is poised to increase. You present this finding to the board of directors, and they are very satisfied. Unfortunately, organizations are a lot more complex than what may initially meet the eye. In this example, there are three other variables that we suspect may be influencing revenue, denoted by A, B, and C. Do you notice any pattern? between A, B, and C either individually or together in terms of how it may be impacting revenue. Most folks will not be able to see a pattern even though there is a very simple relationship between them. Using statistical modeling and predictive modeling we're going to hunt and try to determine if there is indeed an underlying relationship between A, B, and C in revenue and then use this information to predict what is going to be happening next over the upcoming four weeks. Now A, B, and C are meant to represent a whole variety of possible variables that may be influencing revenue within your organization. For example, they may include weather, time of year, or current and ongoing promotion. Or they may represent current com competition pricing, geography, and an ongoing advertisement. The sky is the limit here. So let's go ahead now and use statistical modeling to determine if there is indeed an underlying relationship. To construct our model, we imported the data from the previous screen into a statistical tool known as Minitab. Now there is a large variety of statistical tools available in the marketplace today, including but not limited to SAS, which is our organization's favorite, SPSS, Minitab, MATLAB, R, Statistica, Stata, S+, and many others. It's important to learn what the differences are between these different packages when determining the best one for your organization. As a result of its simplicity uh, and the simplicity of this particular example, we decided that Minitab was a good tool to demonstrate the value of a multiple linear regression, which is the technique we're going to apply here. So to develop our multiple linear regression model, we're going to go to Stat, Regression, then click on Regression. We're going to select revenue as our response. That's what we're looking to see if we can predict or find a relationship for. And then A, B, and C are the variables that we think may be related to revenue. So they are our predictors. Now it's important to note that we are using this particular multiple linear regression model. We're only going to be able to detect a small number of relationships that may exist in the, in the data. And that is, they need to be linear relationships. There are other types of more complex relationships that often exist within business data sets. And the multiple linear regression model would not be able to detect them. Um, a good example is when there is a nonlinear pattern that may be occurring behind the scenes. That's when you may want to consider using an alternative technique that is better suited for that particular problem. This is where the guidance of a seasoned business statistician could be very helpful in helping you to squeeze the most information and predictive power out of your business's information. But for now we're going to just look to see if there are any linear relationships under the covers here that may help us to determine revenue. We're going to select OK. And on the top here, we now see our linear regression model. And what it's telling us is that in order to determine revenue based on the data that we presented it, revenue equals 15, which is called the inter intercept term, plus 1A, so plus A, plus 2 times B, minus C. And if we look, that is indeed the relationship with our data. So 15 plus 2 plus 2 times 4, that's 8, minus 4, that indeed gives us 21. 15 plus 1, plus 2 times 5, that's 10, minus 2, that is 24. And if you look, that is indeed the pattern that is occurring behind the scenes. Our statistical model was able to find a relationship that we had difficulty seeing visually. And again, we could have been doing querying, we could have been doing OLAP cubes, but the same pattern would not have been detected because it's very difficult to visualize these patterns unless you're using some type of a statistical technique. 
So now using this information, let's now apply that particular model to our upcoming four weeks and decide exactly what is going to be happening next. When we apply our multiple linear regression model to the data from the previous slide, we see a very different story than what our best fit trend line was telling us. And that is we see that revenue is about to decline and decline substantially. When we do a side by side comparison between the two results, the difference becomes even more clear. Whereas the best fit trend line was showing a steady increase, the multivariate model is showing a very rapid decline in revenue over, over the upcoming four weeks. By looking at a plot, we see the difference even more so. Best fit trend line is going up, showing things are going well for our organization. You present that information to the board of directors and they're very happy. No decisions and no changes get made. On the other hand, when we look at the results from the multiple linear regression model that looked at many different variables at one time to determine relationships of revenue, we see a very different story. Whereas initially, indeed, the revenue was projected to increase with the multivariate model, it shows that over the upcoming four weeks, something has changed in our environment that will cause our revenue to plummet very quickly. Now, if we presented this finding to our board of directors, the decisions that are likely to be made would be very different. They may include making some type of radical change to our current sales structure, or changing a promotion, or studying our comp competition. Something needs to be done here because we have a serious problem. So there is a very big difference in how the board of directors will respond when we present one piece of information versus a multivariate finding, model finding. So which one is correct? Which one was able to best identify what was going to happen next? Well, indeed, when we overlay the actual results, we see that the multivariate model was able to very easily, very nicely, and very accurately detect what was going on behind the scenes. Now, this particular relationship that was under the covers is indeed a very simple relationship. And oftentimes in organizations, the patterns that may exist may be a lot more complex than what we have here. And so, of course, performance and model accuracy will vary. But the important aspect to note here is that by looking at a lot of different variables at one time and looking for underlying patterns, we were able to come up with a better finding or better decision as to what was going to happen next, and that is going to have a very large impact on our organization. So some lessons to learn here is that the past may not resemble the future. Oftentimes there are patterns and relationships that are hidden under the covers that are very difficult to visualize. Predictive modeling is a method that may be used to determine these underlying relationships and search for them. And in this particular case, those findings may have indeed saved an entire company from insolvency. A, B, and C are meant to be examples in this case. They're examples of variables that exist in your organization. And there are hundreds if not thousands of possible variables that may be floating around within your given company. The most important thing to note, though, is that each organization should start simply. You should identify what are areas where predictive modeling may be able to help us in the short term, and then develop a strategic plan for how to expand that in the long term. From all of us here at Boston Decision, we thank you very much for your time.